Hello, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Wednesday, November 18th, and I have your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thank you for choosing here, choosing to be here to get informed on what's impacting you here in Northeast Ohio. And we have a lot to get through today, so we'll get right into it. Cuyahoga County has just finished a press conference. We have breaking news. It is now 3 p.m., and Cuyahoga County has issued a stay-at-home advisory for people recommending that people stay home and that schools and churches close now through December 17th. This is after the city of Cleveland reported 509 COVID-19 infections for Monday and Tuesday of this week alone. That's the highest number of COVID cases that we've seen in a two-day period since the pandemic began. And so now Cuyahoga County has issued a stay-at-home advisory. That's effective today through, again, 12.01 a.m. on December 17th. Now, that's four weeks, which is two COVID-19 incubation periods. During the press conference just a few moments ago, Cuyahoga County Executive Armin Budish said that more Ohioans have been killed by COVID-19 than have been killed in the entire Korean and Vietnam Wars combined. The positive test rate here in Cuyahoga County is now at 15% and rising, and Budish said that based on projections from Case Western Reserve University, if we don't do something now, we'll be hitting as many as 1,000 to 2,000 COVID-19 cases per day in Cuyahoga County alone in the next several weeks. Based on the advisory, it's advised that people only leave home to go to work or school and for essential things such as seeking medical care, going to the grocery store or the pharmacy, or picking up food. It's also advised that people avoid traveling in and out of the state of Ohio if you live in Cuyahoga County and to forego having guests in your homes during the upcoming holiday season, which is something we've been talking about a lot with Thanksgiving coming next week. And it's also recommended in the stay-at-home advisory that schools and churches go fully online after the Thanksgiving holiday. We have that order up on WKYC.com, so you can, excuse me, not order, advisory, up on WKYC.com so that you can see that and read that for yourself. And again, this is an advisory. The officials today, including Mayor Frank Jackson, asking people to voluntarily adhere to these advisory guidelines. But again, this is not an order. This is not something that police are going to be enforcing at this time. It is an advisory. Franklin County also issued a stay-at-home advisory as well. Theirs will start on Friday, November 20th. So both Cuyahoga and Franklin counties, where Columbus is, going beyond what Governor Mike DeWine issued in an order with their advisories, going beyond in one sense with their recommendations, not going beyond in the sense that these are advisories and not orders. Today, Governor Mike DeWine spoke in the city of Cleveland, and he talked about the stress on hospitals. He says... He reminds people how hospitals were supplemented with workers from Cleveland and New York City, and there's simply no place for us here in Ohio to borrow nurses and to borrow doctors from, so it's important that we don't stress our hospital systems. Governor Mike DeWine this morning from Cleveland said that if we turn this ship around right now, we know that hospital admissions, at least for a while, are still going to go up. DeWine said this is not sustainable. We have to turn this thing around and we have the ability to do it. He said, I'm asking every Ohioan to cut back on things you're doing and to stay home more. So now let's turn to the order for Governor Mike DeWine, which we don't have the exact text of the order yet. We do know that it goes into effect tomorrow, Thursday, November 19th for 21 days, and this is a curfew. Now, some people have been talking about this as a business curfew, but Governor Mike DeWine made very clear today this is not a business curfew. He said this is a real curfew. We want people home at 10 p.m. throughout the state. So it's from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m., goes into effect on Thursday, November 19th, and that's for 21 days. There are things, though, that will remain open. So this is a little bit confusing because restaurants and bars and businesses have to close at 10 p.m., but they can still remain open beyond 10 p.m. for takeout. And delivery is permitted. So on the one hand, the governor is saying be home by 10 p.m., but on the other hand, he's saying it's okay to go pick up takeout after 10 p.m. Well, he clarified that a little bit today in his remarks from Cleveland. He said, if you're in your car, you're not going to be bothered. We're not trying to create a situation where police are pulling people over after 10 p.m., but it's where you're going when you're in your car that might make an issue here. And also, he said, after 10 p.m., you can still take your dog outside or you can go for a walk 
but you're not going to be able to be going places, congregating in groups after 10 p.m. in the state of Ohio. This is technically a second degree misdemeanor punishable by up to 90 days in jail with a $750 fine. But Governor Mike DeWine again said we're not asking police here to be in a situation where they are writing tickets for people and that sort of thing or making arrests. But he said if you're in your car, you should be not bothered. But it gave the example that if you're maybe at a gas station and a bunch of people congregating at a gas station, the police might pull up and say, hey, go home. So that's what Governor Mike DeWine was saying today from Cleveland about that curfew order for the next three weeks throughout the state of Ohio. Here's some good news related to COVID-19. We know we heard that Moderna has an almost 95% effective vaccine. Well, Pfizer is now saying that its vaccine is also about 95% effective. This is based on new test results. Pfizer and its partner BioNTech are now preparing within days to ask for emergency use authorization. This is the new data that has come out that has pushed it along to this point in the process. Their study of 44,000 people. In that study, 170 people got infected with COVID-19. Of those 170 people, only eight of those people had been given the vaccine. So that means the other 162 people had been given the placebo shot. So promising results there. That is what is now telling them that they believe the effective rate is 95% for the Pfizer vaccine as well. And their results also show that it's safe and also protects older people, which of course we know is one of the most at-risk populations for dying from COVID-19. So if that emergency use gets granted by the FDA, they, they, they can then begin the process of the distribution. But remember, that will also take time. But still, Definitely a positive development there when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccines. Here's a new development as well. The FDA is now allowing the first at-home rapid coronavirus text test. Excuse me. The FDA granted emergency authorization use for this 30-minute COVID-19 test kit, but it does require a prescription, so that will limit the availability of that, at least in the immediate future. Here's how it works. You take a swab in your nose, and you swirl that swab in a vial that comes with a solution. Then you take that vial, you plug it into a portable kit, and within 30 minutes, that kit will light up either positive or negative. Now, this is a huge breakthrough because the FDA has authorized nearly 300 tests for COVID-19. Only a few of those have been authorized for at-home use, but even the ones previously that have been authorized for at-home use, you still had to send a sample to a lab. So. Having this fully at-home kit is a huge breakthrough again in terms of testing, which is not necessarily preventative, but very helpful in terms of controlling the spread of COVID-19. Now, we have been waiting for those new numbers from the Ohio Department of Health. We got a message on the coronavirus dashboard that those numbers are delayed. As soon as we get them, we will have them for the state of Ohio on WKYC.com. We'll also have them in our broadcasts tonight as soon as they are available. But I do want to touch on the U.S. and the global COVID-19 numbers right now. In the U.S., again, we are really surging towards that 12 million case number. That number now from Johns Hopkins University at 11,419,204 cases of COVID-19 at the national level. And a lot of deaths in the last 24 hours. Almost 1,800 new deaths reported in the last 24 hours. That number now almost at 250,000. It's 249,430. And when we compare those numbers to the global numbers, we've got 20.4% of the cases and 18.6% of the deaths, despite the fact that the U.S. only has about 4% of the global population. Globally, a huge increase in case numbers. It was just yesterday globally that we hit 55 million cases. Well, we are knocking on the door of 56 million cases globally now right on the verge of it. It's at 55,946,862. And the total number of deaths now at the global level is 1,344,557. Now, given the advisories that have been issued and the curfew orders, this is not going to surprise a lot of people that the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad's Polar Express will be canceled because of the rise in COVID-19 cases. It will be canceled effective tomorrow and possibly even sooner, given now the stay-at-home order in Cuyahoga County. We'll see if there are any adjustments made there, but as of tomorrow, it will be canceled. It was supposed to run through December 20th, but not this year, unfortunately, but there is next year. Now, speaking of 
COVID-19 and how that's impacting things, the Cleveland Browns have now placed three more players on the COVID-19 reserve list. Those players include right tackle Jack Conklin, kicker Cody Parkey, and long snapper Charlie Hewlett. Now, the Cleveland Browns in a statement today reminded us that people who are placed on the COVID-19 reserve list, according to the NFL and the NFL Players Association agreement, have either tested positive for COVID-19 or have been quarantined after having come in close contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. So we don't know if any of these players have actually tested positive for COVID. So let's make that very clear. Yesterday, the Browns placed fullback Andy Janovich on the COVID reserve list. And last Friday, they placed offensive lineman Chris Hubbard on the COVID reserve list. We do know before those players were placed on the reserve list, there was a statement from the Browns that players did test positive. But the Browns can't release any specific information about the health condition of their players. Also today, star defensive end Miles Garrett didn't practice because of an unspecified illness. Now, as of right now, the Browns, who are 6-3, and three, are supposed to host the Philadelphia Eagles at First Energy Stadium on Sunday. We will see what impact the stay-at-home advisory might have. Again, it's an advisory in Cuyahoga County. It is not in order. And today, Governor Mike DeWine did say very specifically when asked about the Browns and whether the Browns would be able to continue have games at the stadium, Governor Mike DeWine said that he's not concerned with an outdoor facility that is only at one-fifth of its capacity where people are spaced out and they are in their pods of people who are in their bubbles and wearing masks and that he's more concerned about the group of four or five buddies who are watching the game in their basement and not observing physical distancing and potentially spreading COVID-19 in that capacity. So we'll of course be closely watching the situation here in Cuyahoga County. The county and the city are certainly free to impose more restrictions than Governor Mike DeWine has imposed. Sticking with sports, but switching gears, The 2020 NBA draft is tonight, and the Cleveland Cavaliers have the number five pick. So if you're wondering who they'll take, there's a breakdown of some of those prospects from our sports analyst Ben Axelrod on WKYC.com. Let's take a look at one of those prospects, Obi Toppin. Now, Obi Toppin is one of the most famous players in college basketball last season. He averaged 20 points and 7.5 rebounds in 31 games. He's six foot nine. He's a sophomore, and he's an Ohio guy. He led Dayton to the number one ranking before that NCAA tournament was canceled because of the pandemic. So he's definitely a prospect that the Cavaliers could have their eye on. If you want to take a look at the rest of that breakdown, go ahead and check that out on WKYC.com from our Ben Axelrod. Again, the NBA draft is tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. And let's end things on a light note, literally. Neela Park's holiday lights will be lighting up on December 4th to illuminate East Cleveland. There will be 500,000 LED lights there. By the way, this is GE Lighting's world headquarters, so you know it's going to be a great display. This will be the 96th year for the display. One of the things that they'll have there is a 38-foot gingerbread house, and it'll be decorated with candy canes, lollipops, gumdrops, all that stuff you see on a gingerbread house, and of course, lit up beautifully. This display stretches along Noble Road for several blocks and it will stay lit through January 4th, 2021. So that's something that you can safely drive by in your vehicle and comply with all of these advisories and orders that have recently been put in place in the past two days and again today. That's it for your 3 News Now update for Wednesday, November 18th. I'll see you next up on What's New. That's at 5 p.m. You can watch that live in your WKYC app along with all of our broadcasts. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for more 3 News Now. Everyone stay safe and be well. I'm Stephanie Haney.